Hi guys, welcome to episode 2 of From White to Blue with You Know Who. What I want to do today is just kind of go over the uh, brief history of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, its origin, stuff like that. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Probably should have done that in the in the first episode, but we're here now. Jiu-Jitsu started in Japan. It was taught to the warriors, the, the samurais, uh, just in case they forgot their sword at home or, or their sword was broken during battle or uh, unarmed somehow. And... Uh, it, it primarily involved throws, chokes, and joint locks. Uh, there's obviously no tapping out. You just threw some guy on the floor, and you broke his arm, ending that fight. And the actual term jujitsu didn't come till around the 1700s. Uh, during the, that time, during the 1400s, it just went by various names like art of harmony or the way of softness, the quiet technique. Things like that. And then, and around uh, 1882, some guy named Kano Jigoro uh, reintroduced uh, Jiu Jitsu, but this time mainly only focusing on the throws and the pins. And voila, Judo was born. But it was not called Judo at that time. So it, it kind of went by. Kano Jiu Jitsu, since it was his version of Jiu Jitsu, but again, dealing only with the throws and the pins. Uh, this guy also introduced the color belt system that we have today, which helped show your rank amongst other students, uh, basically your level of knowledge in the art. Another thing that he did that brought uh, a lot of fame to Jiu Jitsu is introduce it to the Olympic sports. So that's why you have that in the, in the Olympic sports. And moving on, so uh, in around 1914, a guy named Mitsuyo Maeda, seen here, was um, this guy came from Japan, went to Brazil, and he just kind of showcased his his talents. This guy was a prize fighter, probably known to the world at that time. Uh, he showed. Kano Jiu Jitsu, again, more like Judo, to Carlos Gracie and his brothers. Um, and they liked it so much, they ended up adopting it and basically changed a few things about it and brought it back down to the ground. So you almost have like, if you're going backwards here, now we're going back to the Japanese traditional Jiu Jitsu. But don't forget, Japanese Jiu Jitsu, you just throw them and you, and you apply a lock. Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is now more of the battle on the ground, per se. Now, reversals and sweeps and stuff like that. So, that's why it's called Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and not Brazilian Judo. Even though it was Judo when it was brought to Brazil, it was still considered Jiu Jitsu. Um, everybody knows who Helio Gracie is. He's basically the father of... Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He was named Man of the Year in 1997 by Black Belt Magazine. And he just passed his art down to his children. Uh, Royler, Hoist, Relson, Ryan. It's kind of hard to not pronounce the H's and the other names. But yeah, they they all start with the R's. All his children's names start with R's. But you don't pronounce the R. It's more like an H or a silent R. Of course, we all know who Hoist Gracie is. He's the one that introduced Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to the world with the first UFC tournament back in 1993. Back then, the UFC tournaments were kind of like martial arts versus martial arts. You had Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu versus Karate, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu versus Boxing, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu versus Muay Thai, so on and so forth. And time after time, Hoist showed the world that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was the dominant uh, martial art primarily because it actually worked with the ground, uh, the ground game. It focused on the ground game. Um, there's not, actually, I can't think of any other besides wrestling that focuses on battles on the ground. So you get a boxer on the floor, he's useless. You get a, a, a Taekwondo practitioner on the floor he's pretty much useless especially against a black belt Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioner which is what was going on in those first couple of UFC tournaments he just 
showed time and time again that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is, is going to have to be something that you know in order to be able to stand a chance in a, in a fight or any mixed martial arts competition. Okay, so let's talk about what you're watching here. Um, the earlier clips were drills that you'll see at most Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gyms. All those drills are factoring in moves that you will be using in your matches. Uh, it's kind of building muscle memory while at the same time stretching you out and warming you up. As you saw, Abraham is a purple belt. He's obviously way better than me. And he was more so trying to show me technique and just wanted to flow more. But me being a white belt, <clears throat> I really couldn't do that with him since I, I, lacked, I lacked the technique needed to be able to do that. So uh, there's a little bit of dialogue between us and... He's kind of telling me to slow down and calm down and just take it easy, but it's hard for me to do that. Just it, it really is. Uh, I really appreciate the guy though. He 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 um, approached me knowing that I was new, and you could tell was really eager to make sure that I'm getting technique down. Uh, he switched off with my partners a few times and just wanted to show me body positioning, the positioning of my feet to be able to execute the drills that we were being taught that day correctly. Um, yeah, here you can see he's kind of just having his way with me. I'm, I'm just doing my best to um, stay alive, if you will. But uh, the guy obviously knows what he's doing. He's a pro belt. And uh, keep in mind, guys, I'll mention this other times. Purple belts have the technique and the ability to, to tap out a white belt. He could he could have tapped me out probably the first 30 seconds of this match, but what most blue belts, purple belts will do is just kind of give you a challenge while letting you figure out where the danger is or how to better position yourself. Speaking of danger, in this clip here, Abraham has me in side control, a plaza Kimura cranks it pretty good and gets the tap just to recap what you saw in the beginning clips there those are all drills that you'll see typically in any Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gym those moves will help develop muscle memory as you do apply those in certain positions in matches not gonna talk about this match here with Nick I'm just gonna wrap this video up next video should be episode number three it will also be my one month anniversary since I started Jiu Jitsu so I'm just gonna point out a few things that I've learned along the ways maybe some pointers for beginners and we'll continue with some interviews and make things interesting the next video should have an interview with Spencer I'm gonna throw a quick clip of Spencer here for you guys to see who he is it was at this moment he knew he f***ed up Thought that was pretty funny. But all right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, as I've mentioned before, I do plan to make these more entertaining. Hopefully, this one was not as boring as the first one. I promise. It's just going to keep on getting better and better. I'm hoping the video quality does get better and better. And I also want feedback. So, uh, for, for those of you watching, feel free to ask questions. Give suggestions of what you want to see or what I should be focusing more on these videos keeping in mind that it's supposed to be kind of like a blog entry of my transition from white belt to blue belt. All right, thanks again. Have a good day. Bye-bye.